All right, so in this video, we'll talk about how we can use a discrete time dynamical system to model, you know, a simple model of gas exchange in the lungs. Okay, so let's start with, you know, a simple, simplified lung model where we're going to assume that, you know, we have a standard adult male had a set of lungs. So we have this simple system where we have this volume in our lungs of 6 liters for you take a breath and then first you exhale and you're going to exhale you know 0.6 liters then your volume is 5.4 liters and then you're going to re-inhale that same amount you inhale 0.6 okay, so you're going to exhale 6 liters of your own air and you're going to exhale 0.6 liters of exhale 0.6 liters of your own air, and then you're going to inhale 0.6 liters of you know, the outside or the ambient or the environment outside air outside of your body. Okay, and so then you re-inhale, you know what you lost. So now you have the original volume again, 6.0. Okay, so this system uh, doesn't change volume, right? You're going to have volume. At the beginning of this breath, you exhale and inhale, and then you have the same volume at the end of it. So it's only during like this after exhale before inhale phase that you have a different volume. Okay, but we're not going to be modeling just the, the volume of air. We're going to be thinking about you know different concentrations of, of different you know chemicals in your lung. Okay, and how does that change as you exchange uh, air between your lungs and the outside environment? Okay, so let's say. Suppose that we have some chemical in our lungs, so maybe it's poisonous, or maybe it's you know not poisonous at all. Maybe it's just helium or something. Um, so our voice gets all funny. So you know whatever this chemical is. Suppose we have a chemical in our lungs uh, concentration, you know, 2.0 millimoles per liter. Okay. And so our lung starts off with, you know, a little bit of it in our lungs, but the outside environment has the same chemical at a different concentration. At, let's say, 5.0 mil per liter. Okay, and, and, you know, just if you don't remember from, from chemistry, uh, a millimole or a mole, right, is 6.0 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So this is like a special number that has to do with making chemistry math simple. This is called Avogadro's number. I don't really remember uh, what it's used for, but basically a mole is, is kind of a number of molecules, right? So then a millimole would be this number times 10 to the minus 3. So that'd be 6.02 times 10 to the 20 molecules of whatever chemical you're thinking about. Okay, so if we're thinking about helium, then we're thinking about molecules of helium, okay, sitting in our lungs. So a mole is a number of molecules, and then we're thinking about concentrations, so number of molecules per volume, okay? And so, you know, if we're interested in how this concentration of this chemical changes in our lungs over time. Okay, so again. Okay, so, so let's say at step one, before we inhale or exhale, before we take a breath, right, our volume is six liters. Right, our initial concentration is going to be 2.0 millimoles per liter, right? That's the concentration we started with of this chemical in our lung. Okay, we suppose that we have some concentration in our lung, and so that's what we'll start with here. Right, so then the number of molecules of this chemical is going to be the volume times this concentration, right? Because then the units will cancel out, and we'll be left with 12 millimoles, or 12 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. 
dependent torrent molecules. Okay, so this is kind of our, our initial condition of the system. We have some volume of air. In that air, we have a concentration two millimoles per liter of this chemical, which translates to a number of molecules of that chemical in our lung as 12 millimoles. Okay, so then, you know, at step two, we're going to exhale, you know, 10% of our lungs air. So 6.6 .6 liters of our air. And we're going to assume that our air is, is well mixed. So we're losing, you know, 2.0 millimoles per liter per 0.6 liters we, we, we shoot out, we exhale from our lungs. Right, so that translates to losing 1.2 millimoles of this chemical. Okay, so we just multiply the volume that we lose by this concentration of the air, of this chemical in the air, and that gives us how many moles of that chemical we lose as we exhale. Okay, so then at step two, right, our volume of our lung now is 5.4 liters, right? So it's 6 minus 0 0.6. Our concentration, let's say we don't know what it is because we haven't done the math yet, but the number of molecules of this chemical is going to be 12 millimoles minus what we lost, so minus 1.2. That gives us 10.8 millimoles. Okay, and now we can find the concentration. And so the concentration, right, is going to be ball, uh, the number divided by the volume. That's 10.8 millimoles over 5.4 liters, and that actually ends up giving us 2.0 millimoles per liter. Okay, and so another way to think about this is we haven't done anything that could change the concentration of this molecule in our lungs because we had a well-mixed lung and we lost some air. So because our lung was well-mixed and the, the air that we lost was well-mixed, then we're going to lose you know, a proportional amount of this chemical so that the concentration stays the same between these two cases. So step one and step two, they have the same they have uh, the same concentration even though they have different volumes. And that's kind of our assumption of, of well mixedness. It's not that like we're losing only the top part of this air. We're saying they're losing, you know, an equal amount of air from all the way throughout the lung. We're losing only 0.6 amount of it, but of that 0.6, we're gonna lose the same amount of concentration that we had. So the concentration is 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 the same between these two cases even though the volume changes. And we did lose some molecules, but overall we lost, you know, a proportional amount of molecules to the amount of air we lost, so the concentration remained constant. Okay, so then at step three, here's where, here's where it's gonna change. Let me, okay, step three is gonna be our inhale. Okay, so let me just make a new picture here since it's crowded. And it looks Okay, so now we did step one was before, step two is exhale, so step three now is going to be inhale, right? So we're going to inhale 0 0.6 liters of outside air, and this air has a different concentration, right? This has concentration of 5.0 millimoles per liter. The number of molecules we inhale of this particular chemical is going to be this volume times this concentration, right? That inhales 3.0 millimoles. 5 times 0.6 gives me 3.0 millimoles. Inhaled. Okay? So then that brings us to step four, which is, you know, the after step. Right, so after the volume is back to 6.0 liters, right, we went down to 5.4 in step two, but then in step three, we inhale the same amount back up, so we're back up to our full volume. Our concentration, that's kind of the, the question. The number of molecules is then going to be the number of molecules we had at step two, okay, so 10.8 millimoles, plus the amount that we gained from the outside, plus 3.0 millimoles. Okay, so that gives us 13.8 millimoles of this chemical in our, you know, after, after we've taken this whole exhale and then inhale. Okay, so then the concentration, our new concentration is going to be this new number of molecules 
over our volume, right? So 13.8 millimoles divided by 6.0 liters, which gives us 2.3 millimoles per liter. Okay, and so, um, you know, what we've done here is we've kind of defined a dynamical system, right? So maybe maybe it's not obvious what we did, but we started with some concentration, CT, right? This was our concentration before this breath cycle. Exhale, inhale, right? And we started with, in this case, we started with 2.0 millimoles per liter was our original concentration. And then after a whole breath cycle, right, so concentration after, we can call that C at time T plus one. So after our exhale, inhale, right, this was like our concentration at step one, and this is our concentration at step four in this process. And our new concentration is 2.3 millimoles per liter. Okay, so this defines a discrete time system. Right, so this is, so this defines a discrete time dynamical system. Right, where we went from concentration at time t, concentration at time t plus one. Okay, we can we can kind of visualize this again, a little more carefully. Okay, so here's my picture again. And there's a couple of different colors on top of each other. And hopefully this goes well. All right, so let's start with our volumes, right? So our volume went from six liters at step one to 5.4 in steps two and three, back up to six liters at four. Okay, and originally we start with CT millimoles per liter, right? So that was our initial concentration. So our initial number of molecules of this chemical in our lung would be the concentration times volume. So that would be six CT millimoles. Right, so this is our concentration in our concentrations in black, number of molecules in blue. Okay? So then you know between steps one and or during step two, we're going to Exhale, 0 0.6 liters, all right? And of this air, since it's just from our well-mixed lung, we lose, you know, concentration that is equal to our original concentration, okay? So the number of molecules we actually lose is gonna be 0 0.6 times CT normals, right? This concentration times the amount of volume lost. The number of molecules lost is this concentration of that air, times the volume of that air. Okay, so then that brings us to, you know, this intermediate step here, right? Where because it was well mixed before, it was still the same mixture and we lost a proportional amount, so we didn't actually change the concentration of this step. We still have CT millimoles per liter when the volume is 5.4 liters, and then the number of molecules here would then be 5.4 CT millimoles. Right, and if we check based on our molecules map, right, we just check the blue, right, we had six CT millimoles, we lost 0.6 CT millimoles, so we're left with 5.4 CT millimoles, okay? And then we're going to inhale some outside air at the next step. We're gonna inhale 0 0.6 liters of outside air, right? So this outside air has a different concentration this concentration is 5.0 millimoles per liter, as opposed to this air which we lost, which had the same concentration that we started with. So now we're inhaling a new amount, a new concentration times the same volume, so we're gonna get a different number of millimoles of this chemical into our system, right? So if we multiply these together, that tells us we inhale 3.0 millimoles, right? This is a number of molecules, okay? So then that brings us to our final step where the volume comes back to its original volume, so six liters. In blue, we're gonna have our number of molecules, right? So we're gonna add the number of molecules of this chemical at this step plus the amount we inhaled. So we're gonna get 5.4 CT plus 3.0 millimoles. 
right? So it's the number of molecules of this chemical is the number of molecules at step two plus the number we inhaled at step three. Okay, and this translates into a concentration once we divide by the volume, right? So our concentration times E plus one, right, is going to be this number of molecules, right? This 5.4 C plus 3.0 millimoles divided by our volume, right? 6.0 liters. Right? So I could, I could write it like this, or I could actually just do out the division. So 5.4 divided by 6 gives me 0 0.9 CT plus 0 0.5. Um, right? And the units of this concentration are millimoles per liter. Okay? So that brings me to, you know, this discrete time system. Concentration at the end of this breath is, you know, 90% concentration of the original breath plus 0 0.5. Okay, so this is my discrete time system that I generated based on this model of gas exchange in a very simple lung system. Okay, and so now that it's in, you know, the form of a discrete time system, we know how to analyze that. We'll switch over to algebra. All right. So here I have my discrete time system update rule, right? 0.9x plus 0 0.5. This was x is my CT, and this is CT versus CT plus 1. If I start with this initial concentration of 2, and I iterate this map, you can kind of see there's an intersection of my update rule in blue with the identity line in red, and it looks like it's around five. Let's iterate from two, and it's going kind of slowly, but you see it's going towards this equilibrium point here at five. And if I look over at my numbers, right, it goes two, 2.3, that's what we just calculated. If we did this system again, using 2.3 as our input, then we get 257, and we keep going for a long time. You know, this is 37 steps of this map, 37 breaths and it's at 4.9 so it looks like it's going towards 5 and if I start it you know exactly at 5 then it's an equilibrium point right 5 gives me 5 gives me 5 gives me five. right and so what does 5 represent back in our original system let me switch notes so the equilibrium point that we just saw that would be a cobwebbing, right? We had an equilibrium point, a stable equilibrium point, actually, right? Since the trajectory that started near it went towards it. So there was a stable equilibrium point for our system at C star equals 5.0 millimoles per liter. Right? So this is the concentration at which this discrete time system gives me the same input as my output gives me the same output as my input, right? So no matter what, once I map this input, my output gives me 5.0 millimoles per liter, and then I keep using this map, it's gonna keep giving me the same number, so I'm kind of stuck there. And since trajectories that start near also head towards this point, it's a stable equilibrium. Okay, so what's special about this number here? Well, if we go back to our problem, we said the lung, we started with a chemical concentration of two millimoles per liter, but that the outside air, the environment, had that same chemical at a different concentration of five millimoles per liter. So this was actually our equilibrium point, right? So our equilibrium point for this discrete time system is exactly the concentration of outside air, right? And you can convince yourself that this makes sense because you think about what's going on. You start with some original amount of this chemical in your lungs, you're breathing it in and out, in and out, in and out. Eventually, you're gonna get the same concentration as the outside air, right? Because the amount of chemical in your lungs is, is nothing compared to what's outside, because that's, you know, you're on the environment, that chemical's mixed around, there's kind of an endless amount of it compared to the amount in your body. So eventually, if you keep exchanging gas enough times, once, the concentration of this molecule inside your lungs is the same as it is outside. 
when you do this exchange process, the concentrations and exchanges are more so the same on both sides. And that's kind of what an equilibrium should represent, right? It's when the ex, you know, the, this exchange rate is kind of balanced. And it's balanced when you have exactly the same concentration inside your lungs as is the concentration on the outside of your lungs. Okay? So it's not a coincidence here that this you know equilibrium point, this stable equilibrium point, is exactly the outside air concentration. Right? And it's built into our model where we always inhaled, you know, the air we inhaled was always this concentration. That was never changing. No matter how much we took from the environment, it's always we're always able to inhale, you know, the same number of molecules. Right? So we're not changing the environment. The environment's changing kind of our internal uh, concentration of this chemical. Okay? And so we'll get into, you know, uh, a more general version of this model in the next video and, and, and how we can think about that as a weighted average. Okay?